The Prayer skill is arguably one of the most important available in the entire game, allowing players to protect both themselves and their items from disaster, while also letting them deal incredible amounts of damage. In this series, I'll be using it to the fullest while trying to complete some of the most difficult PVM challenges, making sure an altar is always close by. This is my Altar Chunk Iron Man. So before I jump in and start playing, I'll go ahead and explain the rules and the exceptions that I'll be using. Starting off with the first rule, I can only train in chunks that contain an altar, or in a chunk that I'll unlock later. These are considered safe chunks, and I'll explain how I can unlock other chunks in just a minute. The second rule is that to leave a safe chunk, I have to turn on the highest level prayer available to me until I unlock overhead protect prayers. I'll be sticking to those permanently after they're unlocked. And I have to equip at least one piece of gear that gives a visible prayer bonus. The third rule is where the risk comes in for the account. If I run out of prayer points while outside of a safe zone, I have to immediately drop everything in my inventory and any equipped gear. And if I die outside of a safe zone, I can't go back for my items. I'll also drop any items that I keep after respawning. The final rule is that prayer flicking is not allowed, period. That includes traveling through danger zones and even while doing normal content, even in a safe chunk. So that's it for the account rules. I only came up with a few of them. I didn't feel like any more were necessary. So now I can talk about the one exception I decided to make. I'm going to start the account with the West Falador Chunk Unlocked, and the reason I decided to do this is because it's kind of weird that the White Knight Castle has no prayer altar, even though they're the biggest Ceridome and fanboys in the game, but the Black Knight Castle does have a Chaos Altar that's perfectly usable. So I figured fair is fair. The last thing I want to talk about is how I am going to unlock other chunks, and I'll do that by hitting certain milestones with the account. Those milestones are going to be unlocking new prayers that I can use, obtaining a holy symbol, making my first prayer potion, and hitting 99 prayer. The chunk I want to unlock has to directly connect to an altar chunk. So, say for example, if we take a look at the Lumbridge Castle chunk, which is where I'll be starting the game, I'll be able to pick any of the eight chunks surrounding it and unlock, <clears throat> unlock one of them to use permanently. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on my Reddit post for new episodes, or leave a comment, and I'll be sure to answer them as best I can. But with all of that out of the way, let's move over and actually start playing. And here we are. So one quick thing I actually did want to go over because I totally forgot to write it into the rules. I actually embarrassingly had to write a script for that because I was so, I was just getting so lost and so preoccupied while trying to explain everything. It ended up being like, I think it was like a five or six minute clip originally of just explaining all the rules and everything. I managed to get it down to like two minutes. So, you know, way better. But what I wanted to explain really quick about the actual altar chunks that I'm going to be using as I play the account, uh, I'm going to use Yanile as an example for this. So if we take a look at the Yanile chunk, there actually is no prayer altar on the surface level. But the reason I'm including this chunk is if we go over to the agility dungeon, you can see that there is an altar right here, and it covers this entire chunk of the dungeon. So the way I'm going to play the account, and as long as there's an altar somewhere in that direct chunk... The chunk is completely fair game. The only thing with that is when I go up or down, like into a new area. So, for example, if I use the dungeon entrance, I have to stay in the chunk that I drop down into if I use the ladder or staircase or whatever. So, like I said, thankfully it covers the whole dungeon down here. But, like, something else I did notice if we go over to uh, Karen Castle and we go down, oops, we go down into the Karen dungeon. So, if we zoom in a little bit, this ladder right here is where I'm going to pop out. But you can see almost the entire, or the entirety of this room is completely blocked off to me. I would have to turn my prayer on just to exist in these parts. But even if we look up here, the chunk stretches all the way uh, past the Abyssal Demons, the Greater Demons, Black Demons, Jellies. It covers all the demons, which is actually really nice because I can get a lot of um, uh, a lot of good high-level combat gear off them, like Rune Full Helm, a Chain Body. I think one of them drops Addy Plate Legs. If I ever actually manage to get my Slayer level up, I can go after, like, Abyssal Demons and Necrols, but I honestly don't think that's ever going to happen. So, to focus on uh, one of the earlier goals of the account that I'm going to talk about while I get some stuff set up here, I actually do want to go uh, for 31 Prayer as fast as I possibly can. The reason being, it does unlock the Edgeville Monastery, and it also unlocks uh, the ability for me to get that Holy Symbol that I was talking about, plus the Monk Robes that are upstairs. I think that'll give me either like a, a plus 10 or a plus 12 prayer bonus. I don't ex uh, remember the exact number off the top of my head without hitting up the wiki. But that bonus alone is going to make the account a lot easier when I start running around a lot more. And the way I'm actually going to do that is 
uh, once I kill this goblin, actually, I'll just open up the map and show a couple chunks that are actually going to be really useful. Because one thing I discovered uh, about this account that wasn't really possible with uh, the older versions that I found uh, that uh, Caveman and Verf had actually come up with, I think, a couple of years ago, is that the Ferox Enclave makes the Chaos Altar way more viable because there are a couple of altars in the Enclave with the Rejuvenation Pool. So that opened up a couple of chunks directly, like, right off the entrance to the Wilderness, right off of Verox. Now, if this little green bastard would die, I could actually show you what I'm talking about. This is the only downside to making new accounts is my awful, awful, awful stat line. Like, that's kind of the sad part. I think I think this gear is, like, equal to bronze or something. I actually have no idea. Once I have enough money, uh, I can actually run over to Alcarid and buy Rune Scimitar once I have a few prayer levels. Because I'll be able to run through the gate without having to worry about uh, my prayer draining too fast. But okay, finally he's dead. So that is the first kill in the account and the first bones buried. It's kind of like when you earn your first dollar as a business. But anyway, uh, what I was talking about, if we go up to the Ferox Enclave, you can see all of these chunks right here. I get to use all of these right off the bat because we have an altar in the Ferox Enclave and we have an altar just off to the right. I actually don't know uh, if this altar existed before the Ferox Enclave, but I'm just very thankful I have the Enclave because it has a ton of useful resources in it. But my main focus would be uh, where the Chaos Druids are, and then if we go up here, the Chaos Altar. They're actually not too far apart, which is really nice. Like, even from Ferox Enclave, this won't be the worst run in the world. I actually didn't take the time to sit down and figure out the math on, like, any any distances, like, from chunk to chunk. So that's going to be really interesting to figure out as I go. But one thing I definitely plan to do is to get 31 prayer pretty fast, I'm actually going to log into free-to-play worlds and collect the ton and ton of bone spawns that are all around this altar because on the free-to-play world... I don't have to worry about the Chaos Druids, and I'm fairly certain there's not going to be any PKers, or even if there are, I mean, you know, if they kill me, they kill me, it sucks, but I severely doubt there's going to be too many around there. And then I just need to bank roughly, I think the calculator said somewhere between like 450 to 500 regular bones. I actually really wanted to use big bones, but the problem is the only ones I could really get are, I think this is the graveyard chunk right up here. There are a couple of big bone spawns up there, but uh, trying to get those and get back to a safe chunk over and over again, I'm not really sure that would work. I might actually still try it just to see which is faster because I need way less big bones. But anyway, the plan is to just bank up those bones and just run back and forth between the Chaos Altar, which hopefully shouldn't take too long. I'm hoping that the, uh, the RNG kicks in quite a bit and gives me uh, some free XP with the bones doubling when you use them on the Chaos Altar. And the nice thing is I can restore my up prayer here, run all the way back, restore my prayer and my run energy, because right in this little building, if you didn't know, uh, there are a few rejuvenation pools. I actually don't know if they work in the free-to-play world or not. I would have to imagine, so there'd be no reason for them not to. But that actually is uh, the main goal right now. So 31 prayer, get the monk robes, get the holy symbol, and then we'll just move along from there into some other challenges. So I'll be back in just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get 10 prayer just, you know, to help speed things up a little bit. And then we'll see if we can make it all the way up into the wilderness. This is actually one of the best drops I can get this early on in the account. Uh, beginner clue scrolls are super easy to complete, even with my limitations. And the best part is they actually have a chance to give trimmed monk robes, which would just look fantastic. Uh, let's see what the first step actually is. Okay, barbarian village. That's not too bad. Definitely not impossible. I can't use uh, the Edgeville altar until I'm level 31 because it is actually upstairs. But I could use the castle or uh, the Dark Wizard's chunk down here. So yeah, I'm definitely going to hold on to that clue scroll and hopefully get it done sooner rather than later. I actually decided to start training on the men and uh, women that are scattered around Lumbridge because I actually had no idea that you could get herbs before you did Druidic Ritual. I always thought you had to complete the quest first, so... I'll definitely take any excuse to start stacking those up because I'm actually not sure right now where a lot of my herbs are going to come from, but I'll figure that out later. So now that I've got a few prayer levels under my belt after training on goblins and men for a while, I actually did want to head over to Alcarid and hit up the uh, scimitar shop to get myself a few better weapons to make the training a little easier. The only problem is, uh, for one of my earlier rules, I can't leave this initial chunk until I have a prayer bonus on me, and the only way I can do that is getting a bronze mace. But thankfully, that's where having uh, my new unlockable prayers comes in. 
Because with ha with starting off with thick skin and now having the next two, I can pick three chunks to unlock in the game, so long as they touch an altar chunk. The other two I'm actually not going to worry about right now. I haven't put much thought into what chunks I want to unlock first. But I definitely want to unlock this chunk right here. It gives me uh, my first levels of fishing and mining training, which means I can get the bronze mace thanks to the furnace and anvil over here. So once I have that done and get the mace in my hand, we can head over to Alcarid and get my scimitar, and that also gives me a chance to test the timer for the first time as far as uh, how bad my prayer points are going to drain. The other thing I decided to change is that I headed over to the wiki and checked. I actually, if I only use one of these prayers at a time, even the, uh, the clarity of thought, my prayer is still going to last for over a minute, and even uh, even traveling over short distances, that is way too much free time in my opinion. So what I actually decided to do is I'm going to turn on enough prayers to equal the drain of a protect prayer, which I believe is, uh, according to the wiki, it drains 20 prayer points per minute. I would assume that's without bonuses. So I can't exactly hit that just yet, but with all of these turned on, I do drain 15 prayer points per minute. So that's about as close as I can get right now. So it is going to make the challenge a little more difficult because if I would have left it how it was, it would have just been way too easy. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock the chunk here. Let's see. I actually don't know what the number of the chunk is. One, two, eight, four, nine. So if I head over to the region locker plugin, I can actually just enter that number in with all of the others that I've already unlocked. Two, eight, four, nine. And there we go. That chunk is now available to me for the rest of the time I play this account. So I'm going to go down and get some mining training and get that bronze mace made. And then we're going to head over to Alcarid. All right. And that is our first batch of bronze maces all done. I'm actually only going to keep two of these because obviously I do need one so I can get into Alcarid per my rules. And I only want to keep one spare just in case I fuck up so I don't have to run back down and mine for more. I could just keep all of these in the bank and stack them up to make things a little easier, but... Just keeping one spare is okay for now. I, I don't really want to hoard these items like with any prayer bonus, just because that would make things a little too easy, you know? If I make a mistake and I do screw up, I, you know, need to be a little hard to get my resources back, which is kind of why I didn't play an ultimate Iron Man, because having to get everything back would just drive me completely insane. So, come on, come over here and give me that money. I just need a little bit more so I can pay for both trips through the gate, and I can go buy the scimitar. Actually, I probably should not use my run energy as much as I can. So let's go ahead and get to the gate, and we're going to go get those scimitars. This will be the first time I enter a danger zone, so it'll be fun to explore this mechanic for the first time. While I went to restore my prayer points and come back so I could head over through the Alcarid gate, I did actually discover a really unfortunate, I guess I'll call it a bug, with how the, uh, the region GPU and the HD texture pack works. They can't be turned on at the same time, which I actually didn't know. And for whatever reason, when I switch from the HD to the, the uh, region GPU, which is how these squares get grayed out, so you know my uh, my danger zones, it messes up the recording really bad, and it takes the entire thing offset and off screen, so I have to reset it. Uh, hopefully I can figure out how to get around that, but for now, I'll just have to not use HD, because I, I wanted to show myself running through the entire danger zone, because I, I think it looks kind of cool, like with everything is shadowed out like this, but... So we're going to turn on the run energy, we're going to equip the mace... Turn on the prayers, and we are going to go. I really hope this lasts long enough. I honestly have no idea if I'm going to make it back or not. I didn't even try and, like, pre-plan this or anything. Uh, oh, man. Uh, you know what? I... No, I can already tell there is no way. Nope, nope, there is no way I'm going to make it back. Nope, two prayer points. And... No. Man, that, wow, I guess I should have planned that out a little better. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'm just going to have to get a few more prayer levels because there is no way I still had, well, I mean, not ridiculously far, but I would have still had to get through the gate and everything for the text. So, yeah, that's really unfortunate. So, just like I said, if I am in a danger zone and I run out of prayer points, unfortunately, everything on me has to go. So, so I am going to have to just home telly out here because I can't even, I can't even pay to get back, so... Yep, I guess I'll have to earn a little more money, make a couple more bronze maces, and get some prayer levels, and give it a try. So that's, yeah, that's really interesting to see that the very first time I enter a danger zone, I failed. So, but that's okay, we'll be back soon enough. I had totally forgotten that they added, like, these little loot beams to Runelight, or maybe that's the actual game, I don't remember which. I know some of the mods talked about it before, but that's actually pretty cool to see. Kind of, kind of highlights the item really nicely. I mean, it's Chaos Runes, but hey, I'll take it. And there is level 10 prayer.
I, uh, I absolutely got a little too ahead of myself when I tried to go into Alcrid with only level 7 prayer. I just got a little excited because I figured, oh, I have the bronze maze. I have a prayer bonus. Now I can go and get it. So now that I actually have level 10 prayer, I'm going to get a little more money so I can just buy the Mithril Scimitar since I'm already so close to getting 20 attack anyway. I also got absolutely spoon-fed a few Rainar Weeds from uh, just killing men for a while, so that's definitely nice to see. But I'm going to go gather that stuff up, and we are going to try it again. I actually went ahead and got 12 prayer instead of 10 because I realized now, now that I can use the, the uh, rock skin prayer with the other two, that actually does equal out to an overhead. So now I have the perfect amount of drain that I was looking for. It's going to give me roughly 36 seconds of time to get through this gate and get down there. So I'm really hoping that's going to be enough. Um, on my last run, I actually didn't realize because I wasn't paying attention. I could have run right here and been safe in this part of the chunk and teleported back, but... I was not paying attention at all, so in theory, I should have enough prayer to do it now, but I guess we're going to find out. So let's hope this works. Oh shit, my run wasn't on. Oh no, no, no. Oh, I already screwed myself. I, I can feel it. Yep, that screwed up. Oh, that probably screwed up the run already. Come on, come on. I got to get that scimitar. Yep, there it is. Run, 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 run. Come on, come on. Oh, I think we're going to make it. Oh, oh, and there it is. No problem. Two prayer points to spare. That is going to be a really nice way to cap off the first episode, actually. Getting a really nice upgrade for me and actually getting through the first minor challenge for the account. So next time, we're definitely going to focus on more prayer gear and getting up to the Enclave so we can get our prayer points up to 31.